Welcome back, this is Brian again. Today I'm gonna to paint a portrait of one of my favorite watercolor artists. Uh, you know, like many of you, I'm kind of a, a watercolor nerd. Kind of, I kind of geek out over, over watercolor stuff. I, I love the medium. I, I love to uh, see other artists' watercolors. I love to paint with watercolor. Um, I kind of geek out over things like, you know, brushes and, and palettes and supplies, different kinds of paint. Um, but I'm also a fan of, the, of kind of the history and the heritage of watercolor. I love that it's been around for so long. Uh, I love things like the fact that the paper that I use um, is from a company that's 400 years old, or that my, my paints are from a, a company that was founded in the 1890s. Um, but I also love a lot of uh, watercolor artists that, um, that have worked in the past. And one of them, and one of my favorites, is Winslow Homer. And this is a, a book of his work. This is one of his watercolors. Um, I just love the loose, energetic quality that he gets into his work. If you look at this sky, it's just, there's not much blending going on, you know, or, or it's very immediate. He puts his strokes down uh, and just kind of leaves them there, if you see, like, in these areas. He just had such a, a wonderful sense of color and just his work, even the most uh, s serene paintings had sort of a d dynamic quality because of his brushwork. Here's another one of his. Just look at the, just the, in the sky, the, the way he left his brush strokes sitting there. You can just see every stroke he made. This one's a little more delicate. I believe there's probably a lot of opaque watercolor in this one, but um, just the delicate work in, in the figure there is just gorgeous. I'll use this as the last example. I just, the way he's got the waves um, going with his brush strokes and the fact that this tree up here, I mean, that, that's like a 20 second tree probably, if that, and he just put it down and, and let it, sit there. So I just love his work. And so today I'm going to attempt to paint a portrait of, of the artist Winslow Homer. Okay, so this is the first time I've ever recorded myself drawing or painting, um, ever. So this is a little strange. Um, I just showed that um, I'm using uh, reference on my iPad. I do that a lot. I find stuff that... Uh, might be fun to draw. Uh, as I said in the intro, this is this is a portrait of Winslow Homer, uh, the the artist. Um, you you younger artists <laughs> don't have it. I don't want to say you have it easy. It's it's always tough to draw. But um, man, to not have to like spend hours at the library looking for reference or you know we used you know if I would shoot my own reference photos for things. Um, you know, you'd have to wait a day for your photos to develop, and you couldn't really see what you had until it was developed, you know, or you could uh, deplete your life savings and, and have uh, one hour photo developing done, and then half the time, you know, most of the photos didn't turn out. So in this day and age, it's a real, it's a real great time for artists to be able to have the technology, um, to have quick access to uh, reference to immediately see what you have reference wise on your your camera your phone and it just blows me away what's possible these days and yes I'm I'm getting old when you talk about this stuff in these terms it shows you're getting old <laughs> anyway so I'm, I'm I'm drawing everything in right now um, and I'm looking at uh, shapes and proportions I'm not uh, I'm not really thinking too much about, you know, I'm drawing a nose, I'm drawing eyes. I'm basically looking at the reference and going back and forth and just double checking and, and, and drawing proportions and shapes and, and all, of, uh, all of the things that go into a portrait. Um, I usually, if you noticed before, I started kind of with the eyes and the, 
the top of the the nose, and I think I do that quite a bit. I I tend to kind of secure um, that point in the drawing, and then all the proportions and uh, other elements kind of sprout out from that area for me, and that's just me. But uh, drawing is is an awful lot like sculpting. Um, you you want to work from big to small. In other words, you want to um, work from um, big kind of loose areas and and work your way down. Looks like I just noticed that his chin was much too short there. Um, you want to work from from big broad areas down to detail as much as you can. You don't want to, for instance, you know noodle away and, and detail an eye if you don't have the rest of the face you know kind of roughed in and, and, and know where you're going with something. Okay at this point I've got most of the features in. Um, I know that um, I am painting this so I'm, I'm not detailing it too much. Uh, I'm just trying to get rough shapes in and, and kind of a guideline for when I start hitting things with paint. Kind of working uh, some of the clothing detail in. He's got a tie and a jacket. And I don't want to, I definitely don't want to get too uh, too detailed with that because I know that's going to be a very uh, loose part of the finished painting. Very It'll probably even um, kind of bleed out to white paper. So I'm just looking at my drawing, looking back at uh, my reference photo that's on the iPad off camera, double checking things, um, hitting more detail, making sure I'm I'm, I'm looking at where shadow shapes are. One thing about this portrait that um, it didn't quite hit me till I was done is that he's got such a big uh, bushy mustache that <laughs> that there's there wasn't any like drama trying to get his mouth just right or, or or whatever because he's got that big bushy mustache it just kind of covers everything as kind of this big giant shadow shape in the middle of his face all right there's the palette it looks like i think it's time to put some paint on this uh usually at this point uh, i would probably take a lot more time looking at the drawing and trying to figure out if the proportions are correct. Like, you know, if this were uh, for for an illustration or something more serious that wasn't just something in a sketchbook, you know, for fun, um, I would really be looking at, at my drawing and, and double checking it against the reference and, and really looking at proportions, really looking at that likeness and trying to figure out uh, what could be better, um, what distances you know between features might be off, uh, just that kind of thing. But in this case, I, I knew I was painting and I knew I was uh, recording, so I just kind of jumped in here. Now I'm painting in a um, pentallic uh, sketchbook, and it's it's a se seven by ten inch sketchbook, or seventeen and a half by twenty five centimeters. And I'm painting with uh, Winsor & Newton sepia paint, watercolor. It's just kind of a, I, I like it, it's kind of a warm gray, kind of a fun, I don't know, just, uh, I like it for monochromatic work like this. And at this point, I'm just putting in, I'm looking at the reference and I'm determining where kind of that middle value uh, is. And I'm trying to start establishing uh, the planes of the face a little bit um, and, and just kind of hitting those middle tones. And if you notice, I, I painted right over that 
that eye on the shadow side of his face. I've noticed that's something, you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of artists, well, a lot of uh, artists starting out anyway, will um, let their brain tell them that eyes are white and and that's how they should be. And they, they tend to leave uh, the eyes very white when they're painting, even if they're in deep shadow. Um, so that's one thing to really pay attention to is eyes rarely um, show up white uh, in a painting. They're, they almost always have shadow on them from the from from the lids or or just you know the the part of the orb that's turning away from the light. Um, just going back to the fact that I'm painting in, in sepia here. I am working from a black and white photo. Uh, so I, I just kind of wanted to uh, not worry about color and and just go for it with this uh, sepia paint. It's also a good way, um, especially for beginners, to um, learn to handle watercolor. Uh, if you're not having to worry about your colors so much, um, it's a good exercise in learning what your washes and your puddles and all those things are going to do um, as you're painting. And really, uh, it's, it's kind of a fun way and kind of a simple way to get a handle on that kind of stuff. Okay, at this point, I'm hitting in uh, some of the folds in the ear. Don't want to get too nuts um, with detail or anything at this point. I um, will probably... Well, in fact, I know I did. I, I, I ended up hitting the most detail around the eyes. And that, that's, as a general rule in portraits, that's kind of the way I think, because that's where I want the viewer's eye to pull in and, and, and focus. So now I'm grabbing some really dark uh, sepia paint. And what I'm doing is I'm using that background, using the, the negative shape of the background against the head to, to define that edge. And you kind of get, you know, on paper that's hard to, you know, if you can't wipe it back to white paper, and, and this Pentallic sketchbook isn't that way, you kind of get one shot at defining a line like that. You don't want to... Um, you don't want to have to hit it a bunch of times. And the background, I'm just letting be loose. I, I want the background to have kind of some interest to it, some some play, some, uh, don't quite know how to say it, just sort of um, different puddles and variations and things that give the background a little bit of interest rather than just a flat um, value back there. And I'm using the background in this case to um, to punch different areas um, of of the edge of the face. Uh, you'll notice that that top right corner um, I've left fairly pale uh, the background, and that is so that the 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 lightest part of of his head there. Um, can so, sort of blend into the background just a, a touch. Um, I don't want uh, the figure to be to look like it's pasted on the background. I want it integrated with the background. And so um, I'll be playing with kind of lost and found edges a little bit so that some shadows, shadow areas will hit the background and some lighter areas will, will blend in a little bit. Uh, just an effort to kind of keep everything cohesive and not not uh, have the figure have a uh, kind of a pasted on to the background kind of look. So at this point I've decided uh, it's time to go in and maybe hit some details around the eye. And you notice with that eyebrow I'm going and grabbing some fairly clean water. I'll put my uh, my little wash, my little shape down for the eyebrow, then go in and grab some water and pull that out so that it will bleed into the clean water. And that will give it um, a value change across there and it won't be quite such a, uh, a caterpillar eyebrow. So 
some of the uh, one of the things I'm do, trying to do here also is not I have a tendency to blend a lot of shapes, especially if um, I'm working on something that um, is for a client or is that really needs to be accurate. Um, I tend to even overwork things sometimes because I'm constantly blending um, shapes that go from one value to another. I'm, I'm blending them out with water and uh, I struggle to be loose sometimes. And, and I like when, um, when I'm able to leave just puddles of color. Um, I think it gives things a lot more interest, um, a lot more life. And so that's, that's why I leave a lot of shapes kind of unblended and uh, just kind of sitting there on the portrait. Okay, I'm going back in now and reinforcing that shadow core um, on his forehead and across the top of his head. And notice I'm leaving um, a little reflected light there next to that dark background. And, and rather than bringing that shadow down into the eye and cheek area like I should, it looks like I decided uh, st starting it on the mustache would be a better idea. Sometimes painting is, is maybe a little bit like being, uh, like having uh, attention deficit disorder. It's like you'll be working away on one uh, section of the painting and then all of a sudden you'll see something else in another part and you'll you'll dive into that, and then you'll see something else, and dive into that, and I, you know, and I guess that's the way it goes. That's how um, that's how one of the ways you can make sure you're you're kind of uh, giving everything the same level of attention. At this point, I'm painting in the mustache, and notice I'm leaving a lot of little shapes in there. I'm not looking at the reference and trying to match. Um, every little hair in the mustache or every little shape, I'm just indicating um, some things there that show, uh, some little sh lighter shapes in the mustache to show that it has texture um, and some volume. Going in there and hitting the, um, the, uh, cheek fold there. I apologize if you hear my dog barking while I'm doing this. Okay, still going in and just sort of um, hitting little shadows, little details. Looks like I didn't like what I did there and tried to pull it off. He had a lot of a lot of um, texture increases um, in his on his chin, and so I was going in trying to uh, establish some of those. Uh, there's his nostril going in, more detail in that shadow side eye. When you're beginning a watercolor painting, it's a good idea, or any kind of painting, or drawing, or, or any um, finished piece of artwork, um, it's a good idea to try to, um, looks like I'm trying to, yeah, I'm defining his chin there with the uh, background shape. Um, it's good to um, try to uh, think ahead about where your darkest darks are going to be. Um, and where your lightest lights are going to be. And if you know where your lightest lights are going to be, you know, for instance, the, um, you know, on the light side of his face, obviously, is, is probably where the lightest lights are going to be um, there. And then there's some lights on his uh, shirt collar and the shirt a little bit next to the tie. And so you, you, you want to be cognizant of that as you're painting and try to uh, not touch into the lightest areas um, and make sure that... Uh, your darks, um, where they should be dark, do end up really dark. Um, you want to have, um, unless you're playing with values and trying to do something that's not a full value uh, painting, uh, you want to make sure that you've got uh, bright whites and dark darks, a full range. 
some good contrast in your in your painting. Okay, I'm going into the tie a little bit here. And I'm going to leave all of this really loose, really just kind of um, suggestions of, um, of what's going on in the photo. Yeah, painting in watercolor is a little bit like chess. You, you kind of have to uh, plan your moves a little bit ahead of time. Stay a few steps ahead and know um, what you're planning to do um, as the painting progresses. Like, I'm looking at um, that shadow side of his um, jacket and, and the tie and the collar there. And I know that um, that's going to be a darker value eventually. So I've put in my darks knowing that I'm going to go back in and hit that middle value on that collar um, and push it into shadow uh, more later. At this point, um, it's it's kind of just ends up being a lot of um, just kind of hitting areas and adjusting things and, and trying to uh, figure out what will um, bring something like this to a, a, a completed state. You notice when I use uh, the background to uh, define edges, I always um, get a little bit of water and pull it back out into the background so that it's not um, it's not leaving a, a, you know just a, a blob caterpillar shape next to his head there, which is actually what what I've done. It looks like at this point, but I bet I, I go in and pull it out a little bit here in a minute, trying to establish uh, his chin and the shadows under his chin there. Like I said, this is just kind of really looking, um, looking at my reference, looking at the eyes, looking at um, what kind of detail he has around his eyes. He has a lot of uh, folds and wrinkles. Still hitting the eyes, still trying to uh, bring the values, the darkest values of the eyes and the folds around the eyes out. At this point, I'm trying to um, pull some shadows um, out from under that nose to define the tip of his nose and blend that shadow uh, side of his mustache into the background a little bit. More mustache detail. You gotta respect the stash. <laughs> Okay, now I'm kind of going in and um, uh, hitting some values on his chin, trying to pull some of those um, details and, and folds on his chin in. And his neck, just trying to um, 
delineate a little bit between his collar and his neck there. Oh, there goes that shadow I was talking about earlier um, to uh, pull in the shadow side of uh, his shirt. Uh, right there, I'm pulling some paint in and, and kind of darkening that uh, reflected light so it's not quite so strong on his forehead. Now I'm noticing on the reference that there's only a couple spots um, of kind of pure white um, on his shirt and collar. And what I'm doing is I'm going in and hitting some of those values to leave um, just that light side of his collar and a glint of his shirt next to the tie there. And then pulling in some darks of the jacket. And again, this, this is loose. This is... Um, basically just suggesting um, things. And you notice I I pulled that uh, top of his shoulder next to the collar up into the background. There's another lost and found edge so that things aren't quite so uh, cut out looking. At this point, I'm just going in and um, trying to define the planes of his face a little more and make sure that the um, that the white area of the painting isn't uh, too much, isn't too glaring. I'm just kind of knocking back that light value a touch here and there so that it's not quite such a big white area. I've noticed that um, his hair doesn't quite have that sharp delineation at the top of it, so I'm going in and trying to... Uh, pull that line out a little bit with a little water and paper towel. At this point, it's it's pretty close to done. And, and this is a point, this is always tough uh, for me to determine uh, whether I'm actually done or if, or if it needs more here or more there or whatever. Um, but yeah, this is this is the point where you're just kind of like really trying to determine if it needs more or if it if it should just be left alone. Looks like I'm not ready to leave it alone. Yeah, I kind of lost my shadow under the tip of that nose, so I'm going back in and um really strengthening that shadow uh, under the tip of the nose and uh, where the mustache is and, and down across his chin. He had a pretty uh, stern look in this photo, so <laughs> he's kind of got the the, arch, you know, the arched eyebrows and the and the scrunched up brow. Now this may look a little odd. His the shadow side of that mustache is going into the background, and it looks like he's got a a big giant lopsided mustache. But I, I'm putting those dark values in, knowing that. Uh, when they dry, it's it's going to blend in with the background, and you're not gonna you're not gonna see that giant mustache shape uh, off to the left side there. It's just going to lose itself into the background. And there I am, kind of pulling it out even more. I'm slowing way down. You can tell I'm <laughs> really, really looking at it, really trying to determine if, if it needs something else, if uh, if I'm done or if or if I need to throw it away, if you know, whatever. So 
I feel like I should break out into song or something at this point so it's not quite so boring. Then I'd lose a lot of subscribers, so I probably don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, so now I'm pulling out some of the, the pencil lines from my sketch. Um, mainly in the light areas that where they stand out the strongest. I don't want to pull all the pencil out. Um, I, I like having a little of that pencil in there in the finished uh, finished painting, if, if I can. I think it adds a little bit to be able to see uh, the artist's hand in the work. Hitting that shadow under the nose again, it keeps uh, <laughs> it keeps finding water and disappearing on me. With 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 any painting. Um, it's it's imperative that your drawing um, is solid under that painting. Um, if if you start a painting in um, on a on a bad drawing that um, that maybe isn't doesn't have correct proportions and and maybe um, is wonky, uh, your painting is going to be wonky. Um, unless you're able to um, see that in your drawing as you paint and correct things. But uh, the base of any good painting is, is good drawing. Generally speaking, I mean, there are people who can who can paint um, just with a brush and hitting paint to paper. That's not me. I, I need a good drawing to start. So maybe I should say, for me, <laughs> the basis of any uh, successful painting of mine is definitely you know a solid drawing. But if you're someone who does follow drawings, you know, if you, if you do actually paint on top of a drawing, um, really make sure your drawing is solid. I held my hands out there. It looks like I think I'm done. Looks pretty finished. Nope. Looks like it needs a little touch more here and there. Camera's getting shaky. I must be moving a lot, getting up something. Anyway, um, so that's uh, my portrait of Winslow Homer. I really appreciate you uh, tuning in and, and staying till the end if you did. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care. <laughs>